It's always scary when I have notes. Um, I was going to do this video outside on a nice sunny day, but today it's raining. Um, and I don't, I don't see it stopping anytime soon, which I'm not really complaining. We need the rain up in the upper Midwest. If you have, uh, if you don't know, there's actually a drought. Um, we're in probably one of the least effective parts of the upper Midwest. So what I want to do, I've got basically got two pages of notes I want to get through. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long to get through them uh, and bore you. Uh, but I have the X758 and I have the X748. Um, and I'm going to talk about why an X758 and why I bought a new one. So basically what it boils down to is I've been looking for a new X series for a couple years. Um, I really, really like my X748. I got it in October of 2013. Um, it now has, I actually said I was going to look at this before I started this video. It has 785 hours on it. Uh, when I got it, it had 235 hours. Most of those hours have been spent with a loader on it. The 45 loader getting, gets used pretty much extensively on this machine, mostly to move all the pallets around that you see in this building. Um, and before then, it moved pallets around the other shop, or even when we, when we used to live in town, uh, we did all that in another state. So this is a very utilitarian machine, uh, or utility machine. Um, I, I, I use it a lot for things other than mowing. Now, I was fortunate enough, I bought it with a 54 inch deck, and I ended up with a seven iron, uh, the 60 inch seven iron deck with this machine. So, I know I like this particular unit as a mower. Um, I really enjoy operating it, the seven iron deck, the high, it's a high capacity deck, so it's very deep. Uh, if you want to, you can go back and look at my videos on the evolution of the John Deere deck, uh, where I say that probably my, the seven iron is probably one of my favorite decks that John Deere has ever produced. So I knew I liked the platform overall. There are very few changes in the X758, other than styling, uh, the, there's an engine change, uh, and then they went with a nine gauge steel deck instead of a seven, a seven gauge steel deck uh, for the high capacity deck. Other than that, the platform is robust. I knew that I liked it, okay? So what are my other options? Well, let's see here. I'm speaking strict, strictly from new here. We have a uh, two-wheel drive, so we get an X730, we get an X734, X750. The X734 would be all-wheel steer. Uh, the X754 would be all-wheel steer. The X750 is diesel two-wheel drive, and the X730 is uh, fuel-injected two-wheel drive. You go for a four-wheel drive gas model, uh, X738, or you go for a four-wheel drive gas model that is also all-wheel steer, the X739. Um, they do not offer X759, so you can no longer get, when you could buy the X758, you get an X749, which was an all-wheel steer and four-wheel drive. You can't get that model anymore. Uh, there's a big debate on why you can't get that model, whether it was weight, whether it was sales. Frankly, I think sales are just poor. Uh, other things that you can look for when you're in this class of machine is a 1 Series, a 1025R, or even now I see a lot of folks going to a 2025R or even a 2032R. Now, obviously, I have a John Deere problem. I'm just looking behind me in this video. I think if you watch this channel long enough, you know that I am a John Deere fan. Um, why didn't I get a 1 Series? Why didn't I get a 2 Series? Frankly, I don't need it. Um, I have 4066R with a loader, so I can, and I have my X748 with a loader. So I have two different sizes of loaders, I don't need it. Um, now obviously, if you have an acre and you, you know, you can justify the use for a loader, then hey, go for it, get a 1 Series. Um, CTC, or Compact Tractor Attachments, does make a loader for the X758. Right now, in, in May of 2021, 2021, not 2020, in May of 2021, that uh, loader is $3,700 plus shipping. So, um, the key thing to remember here, and I've just outlined a bunch of this stuff, is every situation is different. I have no need for a 1 Series. I can't justify a 1 Series. That's not to say that I wouldn't enjoy having one, but the whole purpose of this machine was to be a mower, and I knew that I liked the X748 as a mowing platform, so there's no reason for me to change my mowing platform, okay? So that is one of the reasons that I went with the X758. So, 
kind of another couple things that kind of factored in my decision for the X758. So kind of a description of our property and the uses for this machine. One, we mow about seven and a half acres. At the same time, my wife extensively uses a yard cart that she likes to operate. One of the key things on some of the older equipment is she is small enough that she does not fit like the 455. She's just not a tall enough person to really get on there and operate it effectively or efficiently. Um, she's just not comfortable on it. Meanwhile, she is comfortable on the X748. We also have some ditches and some small hills. Uh, if you're going to watch the mowing video before this where I take this out the first couple hours, uh, you can see down by our pond uh, there is some hills. We also have some ditches. I mow the ditches with either the X748 or the 1445. Uh, they are decently deep ditches. Uh, one is just basically an embankment that comes down to our property and levels off. Uh, so they are decently deep um, and they do have some good slope to them. You need four wheel drive while it's on it. So hence one of the reasons that we need four wheel drive. Now, one thing I don't do a lot of with my X series is move snow. I have my 4066 with a snow blower on it. So yes, four wheel drive for moving snow is handy, but it's not necessarily required. However, on occasion, I do do some blade work uh, with the X748. So I figure I might as well do blade work with the X758. And also one of the big things and one of the things I purchased with this machine was the through axle drive shaft for the front axle, which I'll install in a later video once it comes in. But one of the things that I wanted to do is I want to use this on the 60 HD broom. In the spring, this machine will probably have a tiller on it because it has a three point. The X758 does not, so it'll most likely have the broom on it. It is four wheel drive, so that really helps with that 60 HD broom sitting up front. That broom can really boss uh, one of these machines around that's only about 1,300 pounds, or 1,400 pounds depending on the ballast that you want to put on it. Uh, this doesn't have any ballast on it right now. I'll probably add some, some wheel weights or some starter weights here in the next 12 months before next spring. So four-wheel drive is nice for operating the broom. It is nice for the blade. Like I said, I'm not necessarily sure that a blade really counts because I'm not going to do a lot with blade work uh, on either of these machines, uh, particularly for moving snow. But four-wheel drive is really, really nice for mowing the ditches. Uh, I have a 455 that I mow the ditches with on occasion, and I can tell you as the dew is settling and things along those lines, that, that ditch does get slick. And so it is one of the things that I really like four-wheel drive for mowing the ditches. My 1445, my front mount mower, uh, if you've watched my channel long enough that I use, uh, it also is four-wheel drive for mowing those ditches. So now the big question. Why diesel? Why on earth am I going to pay the premium for diesel? Um, well, all of my other machines are diesel. My X748 is diesel, my 1445 is diesel, my 455 is diesel, and I'm actually mostly into those machines on camera. And then back behind me in the other building, my 4066 is diesel. So there's no reason for me not to go with the diesel machine. At the same time, resale value, typically the increase, and this is just a historical perspective from my research, on average, whatever you pay when you buy a machine, if you take care of it, that extra premium for diesel, well, you'll end up getting out in the end. So if the diesel premium is $800, then whatever that premium was, or $800, however, it might, however much it might be, that is what you're gonna sell the machine above and beyond a gas machine of the same age and same number of hours. Um, that is just observation on my part. Uh, I have made ob that observation Everything from the, I mean, you look at the value of a 332 compared to a 318. And then you go look at inflation adjusted prices for those machines. You go look at a 430 versus a 420. Uh, back in the, the 80s and 90s, same time as that 332. You look at the inflation adjusted prices and you look at the selling prices, compare a 420 to a 430, and it pretty much always pans out. Same thing with the 445 versus 455. Um, it just, that's how it happens. Um, so ultimately, yes, you're out the cash up front, but you'll get that cash back minus any inflation in the end. Um, now what I want to talk about is I want to talk about kind of price. Uh, I touched on this in my introduction video of this machine, uh, and particularly about a, a price of an X series versus a one series. And I actually, I did a bunch of math here. 
So, and what I'm going to do, and these are prices as of May of 2021, I'm going to use the price I paid for this machine. So I told you in the first video, I paid $13,950 for this X758 with the 60 high capacity deck. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the deck off. All right? Because we want an apples to apples comparison. There are some changes. Uh, first, first off, deck prices are a little bit more variable by dealer. Um, so I looked at my invoice that I have on this machine right here, and I paid $11,962 for just the tractor. That's basically a 7% discount off MSRP. The deck was another $1,988. You, you, well, 11, we were looking at $11,962 for just the tractor. A 1025R for just the tractor has an MSRP of $15,066. That's right now. You take the 7% off, so we're going to give them, we're going to give the buyer of the one series the same 7% off of MSRP that I got on this unit right here. That's $14,011. All right? So, $11,962 for the tractor or $14,011 for a 1025. No deck on either tractor. I think that's the important key here is we're basically boiling it down to its base form. Now what you're going to say is, but wait, a 1025 has a three-point has a rear PTO. You are correct, okay? So three-point right now for a Category 1 limited three-point is $677, and a 540 PTO is $999 and some odd cents. We're just going to call it even thousand bucks. That means if you add all those together for just the X758, the three-point, and the 540 PTO, you're looking at $13,639 for the same setup, same horsepower. They're both 24 horsepower. We have to remember that. The three-point and the 540 PTO. The 1025R is $14,011. Now, obviously, if you're going to buy a 1025R, you're probably going to want a mowing deck. Depends on the mowing deck, if you want to go for a 54 deck, if you want to go for a 60 uh, D deck, there's all kinds of options. You're going to have to pay to set that up on the tractor. Um, so that, that's going to be an added cost, I'm guessing above and beyond $2,000 if you go for the same 60 inch deck. A loader for 1025R is $4,393. I'm assuming there's probably going to be some uh, shipping and setup on that with the dealer. And as I told you, you can get a CTC loader for this thing for $3,700. So realistically, dollar for dollar, you know, you're coming pretty close on um, cost there. Now, you can't put a backhoe on this readily. A uh, backhoe for a 1025 is almost $7,000, but I figured I'd just throw that out there for uh, posterity. So ultimately, does the, the kind of the, the thought that the 1025 is the same price or a, a highly optioned X series is the same price as a 1025R? More or less, I mean, you're looking at about $400 difference between the two. Uh, chances are uh, any 1025 you, 1025R that you buy is going to be more than a, X7, a highly optioned X7 series. Period. End of story. Um, I don't necessarily think that, in fact, I'm almost calling that the 1025R, this is the same price, is almost a myth because by the time you start adding attachments and stuff, uh, 1025 is almost always going to be more expensive. The next thing I want to cover is new versus used. And I covered just a little bit of this in my uh, introduction video of this machine. Hopefully, I'm not talking too long here. Um, but what I did is I just got on a couple of used websites and I found at least, or I tried to find at least four machines for each of the following model years to compare to. So we have a 2021 to 13950, and I'm not adding tax because tax is going to be uh, similar for, or different between all the states. Um, and I only took models that had a deck attachment only. No three point, no rear PTO. Um, nothing along those lines. I mean, obviously, armrest or something like that, I, I would take those machines. But I didn't want any, I, I wanted an apples to apples comparison. So, deck only, I did take the 54 and the 60 because there weren't enough machines to get a good sample size with just the 60. 
So in, for 2020 used models, we have, I picked four, and these were just randomly across a couple different websites. I did have to figure out which ones are the same across websites. I did find one that had different prices on two different websites. Um, okay, so we have, uh, the, these units had both 54 and 60 inch decks. They had anywhere from eight to 110 hours on them. Uh, they ranged in price from $13,500 to $11,695. Average price across the four units that I picked was $12,523. 2019, four units uh, ranging in price from $12,000 to $10,395, uh, anywhere from 77 to 295 hours. Um, these mostly had six, I think there was only one with a 54 inch deck in there. Uh, average selling price or average asking price was $11,198. 2018, uh, I only found two 2018s that I could really consider, uh, I would say, worthy of, uh, of this discussion. Uh, one was $10,500 and one was 80, basically $9,000. So the average for 2018 was $9,747 and they had 491 and 307 hours on them. I don't think the 2018 is a great comparison at the moment. There's just not enough machines out there uh, set up like this one with just a deck and no, no PTO, stuff like that. 2017, there are many, many out there. Interestingly, 2017, uh, we have prices ranging anywhere from $10,500 to $10,000. So there's only a $500 uh, price swing. Hours on those was 150 to 820 hours. Um, which kind of shocked me. So an average price of $10,300. So here's the key. We buy and use, run by a new one. I mentioned this in my previous video about 0%. You can see there was no way I was going to remember all these numbers. That's why I have my handy dandy book here. Uh, in 2021, $13,950. What we're going to assume is we're going to assume that nobody is going, we're going to assume that the person buying this machine is going to finance the full purchase. All right? Because honestly, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to um, put much down on those. Uh, just from a loan standpoint, you're going to have to originate the loan, and I can, we can talk a little bit about that. So the assumption is the loan's going to be for five years. It's going to be for an annual. It's going to be for four and a half percent based on today's percent uh, interest rates. And we're going to go ahead and assume there is no origination cost in the loan. So you might be using a home equity line of credit or something like that to fund this, or your bank has an offer where you can do a personal loan with no origination fees. Obviously, you could run into origination fees. You know, you have to talk to your bank about how much that would be. So, 4.5%, five years. For 2020, now keep in mind, this one's $13,950. For a, 20, a used 2020 unit, you're going to spend $12,523. Your interest expense on that 4.5% is going to be $1,484. And so, at the end of five years, you're going to end up paying $14,007. 2019, 11,198 is our average. You're going to find it, your, your interest cost is going to be $1,327. That means your total is going to be $12,525 for a two year old machine. In 2018, uh, that's the year that we don't have a, a big sample size for identical machines. Uh, basically, your inco in total cost after interest is going to be $10,902. And then in 2017, your end cost is going to be $11,521. And keep in mind that all the 27s are out of warranty. Um, and then, you know, you can go ahead and do a stepwise progression using the same numbers that I did, pick a couple machines, and you can figure out how much your interest expense is going to be. So when it boils down to it, it doesn't make much sense to me, at least, to buy now. Now, obviously, if you, if you like to buy things cash, which there are, there are a lot of folks out there who like to buy things cash, Hey, if you want to buy uh, used and save a little bit of money, by all means, it's probably a good idea because uh, you're going to save a little money. You obviously have to factor in the cost that, you know, basically the, the time cost of that money by shelling it all out up front and not, you know, investing it or something like that. Because obviously if you'd invested in the stock market this past uh, probably 10 months, you would have made quite a bit of money. 
Um, so, you know, it's one of those deals that you really have to evaluate your own financial situation. I am by no means telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what factored into my decision to buy this machine right here. And why I bought a new X758 versus, say, a 1 Series or versus a gas engine or why, not I, why I didn't buy a used machine. And when you go through the numbers and you can do your own research, um, you know, take your time to do it all uh, before you go buy a new machine. Now I can go ahead and tell you, um, I've been looking for one for a while and I'm sure this is going to aggravate some folks based on the current supply chain. The whole reason I got this machine is because I happened to stop by John Deere, uh, the dealer I normally work with, um, to buy parts and stuff. I stopped by there and they just had this sitting on the lot. I was 95% sure it was sold. Walked in, talked to the store manager. Store manager goes, actually, no, we haven't sold it. It's been in inventory 16 days. Oh, okay, well, would you give me a price on it? And so he gave me a price on it. I said, I'll take it. So it's one of those, it's one of those things that, no, I did not have to wait on this machine. The fact that it was sitting on the lot, and honestly, if it had a 54-inch deck with it, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, but the fact that it had the 60-inch deck with it, the fact that it was sitting on the lot, had a half hour on it, I'll take it. Um, it was one of those kind of opportunistic uh, situations that I had been looking for one for quite a while and it presented itself to me. So I took that opportunity and I bought a new machine. So it was not necessarily, it was a quasi-planned purchase for lack of a better term. Uh, it really wasn't necessarily something that I was actively pursuing, but I had been lo looking, loosely looking for one for so long that I decided I would just go ahead and bite the bullet and now we have an X758 and we can do a lot of good videos on it. Uh, if you have questions, comments, leave them below. Um, we're gonna get into comparison later. I'm not gonna do it today. Um, I think I wanna do that outside when it's sunny. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare them, we're gonna look at the decks, uh, everything like that. So thanks for watching.